Okay, thanks. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. So here is the outline for today's talk. Uh, basically, there was three parts. Why we're interested about the uh, uh, flow models in the parse media. So I will probably give you some background or uh, about some things um, answering why we're interested in about that. And second is the main part. The body part of the today's talk is the Maxwell flow model and uh, how we derive it and how we solve it. The last part is the uh, solutions and how we simulate um, what a method we use and um, we did some analysis and uh, get some conclusions and there was also some future works need to be done okay that's pretty much of the uh, outlines so here we go the background so i like to talk about uh, why we're interested in the uh, flow models so Mm, it's related to the oil explorations. So usually, if we're talking about um, petroleum, if we are lucky in the Middle East, you just drill a well on the ground and you probably have the uh, petroleum spurred out. And what do you do is you sit in there counting the money, the dollars. But unless, the, unless, I'm sorry, unless you are in Israel, you can drill all you like. Yeah, but, yes, yeah, yeah, everywhere you like. <laughs> But we're not that lucky. Like 99% of the cases in the, on the earth is the, is the figure showed on the right side. It is, it's not very easy to get the things out there from underneath. What do we do is that we uh, drill well. You can see the left is the, uh, what do we call it, is the injection wells. We give the pressures underneath in the rock or whatever and push the, liquid out from the, what do we call the project, pro, production well. Hmm. Um, well, sometimes you may not just have only one injection well, you probably have something like uh, 10 around the projection, a production well, okay. So any guess, like what do we inject from the injection well to press the oil out? I don't know, probably water. Water. Very good, yeah. So it's very cheap. What do we use the seawater? Okay, very cheap, you can get anywhere. So, um, so here's the question, why we're interested in. First is that uh, it's not easy to test where the, uh, mm, the oil is. And the second is, it's really expensive to put a well underneath. So it's probably cost like half a million to do that. So for the physicians, especially engineer, petroleum engineer, they really want to do the testing and simulation before they put a well underneath. Okay. So that's pretty much about the uh, the background. And what and uh, what we are going to study is this part. Um, the the behaviors of the um, pressures around the injection, uh, around the production well. And second is the background of the approach we're going to use for our study is the fractional calculus. So here's come the questions. We're familiar with the um, uh, derivative, but what if we change the derivative to be a uh, fraction? So in, I think in 1695, uh, Lovitos asked Lebanese about the possibility that we uh, change the order like to be something else rather than the integer. Well, Lebanese goes that uh, it, will, it will lead to a paradox um, for which they like useful uh, consequences will be drawn. Well, actually Lebanese is actually correct. So let's see how to answer these questions. Mm, so first, there were actually two ways to interpret these things. Okay, first is that we differentiate f and times. Well, another way to uh, explain that is uh, we interpret it as the operator on f by the parameters n. So what Lopitos 
was asking is about the behavior、um, of the operators when n is not integer. So in most of the natural,、uh, in most natural place to start study、uh, for the fractional order differential or integrations order is with the formula called Cauchy formula. Okay. So if we repeatedly、um, take the nth order、uh, antiderivative of f, we will have this formula with i to the nth power. F x equals to one over n minus one factorials integral from zero to x x minus twelve to the n minus one power f twelve to twelve. <coughs> and if we note that the gamma functions gamma n equals to n minus one factorials, we could have a generalized Cauchy formulas right here. We just replace n minus one n minus one factorial to be tau alpha alpha. Hmm. And、uh, this is also called the left Riemann Liouville integral, and it's valid for integrations to the fractional order. So how do we、uh, define fractional order? Just by、um, the d alpha to be i to the negative alpha. And、uh, indeed, there were in fact many different ways to.、Uh, Interpret the uh, uh, fractional differential and the integration operators, but the、uh, Riemann-Liouville integral is the simplest, easiest to use and understand.、Mm. I gave you、uh, simple examples.、Um, this animation shows that the、uh, Riemann-Liouville integral continues. Continues by transform between y equals to one and y equals to x and y equals to one half x square and the parameters alpha is changing from negative one to one. So you can see that the、uh, Riemann Liouville、uh, integrals sweeps between the line from the y equals to one and the curve y equals one half x square. Any questions so far?、Uh, partially one. So this is the method that you're going to use, yeah,、um, or yeah. this is the way we're going to define fractional derivative. Yes. So I don't know. I mean, I know of a version that comes from. I think at least I know it from Feynman,、um, where he uses Fourier transform to find. Yeah,、um, later on. Yeah,、derivatives. later. So it's um, is、That's、it equivalent? The background. Yes. I have a question、mm -hmm. about the generalized Cauchy formula.、Mm -hmm. So. If alpha is a negative integer, this gamma function is singular,、uh, is zero, right? So, what happened? Alpha is negative, so this is singular.、Uh, but then the um the thing that you're integrating is also singular, yeah. So maybe the singularities. Oh,、well, they're both. I don't know. <laughs> they both blow up, so that doesn't help. Um. Hmm. But if of course there's a negative integer, you're just integrating f, yeah, some number of times. So maybe you don't even need it. So I think the question is,、uh, what kind of f can you define?、Uh, this this definition works. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm saying that probably you could just ignore、um, the integer cases because then you're just integrating f, yeah, and there's no problem in talking about integrating f. Well, <coughs> I I think actually,、uh, first you you do the same as you do with gamma function.、Uh, Uh, integral for gamma function. First, of course, the integral. There is no problem with convergence for alpha between.、Uh, Cx and.、Uh, oh, and also it's one over gamma. One over gamma is entire. It has. It goes to zero as alpha goes to negative integer. So probably that cancels with the singularity of the. Zero, zero,、uh, zero,、yes. uh, zero at one, and then you do the analytic continuation of the.、Integral. Yeah, that would make sense. Ah.、Uh. Okay, so we're good.、Mm -hmm. So next is the model setup, which is the main body of this talk.、Mm, so before we were going to the derivations of the model, we're gonna set up the uh, uh, boundaries and everything. So we are interested in the、uh, parse media. So the so this figure shows that what is parse media is. So you could consider it like、um, frame a matrix with the flo Floyd.、Mm. 
So for today's talk, we're interested in the Maxwell fluid. And you can consider in this yellow, uh, brown was um, those kind of parse media. And we ideally set up our models to be an infinite reservoir, which is um, from the horizontally x to the infinities and y to the infinities, the pressures will be zero. And the initial boundary conditions will be when the time equals to zero, everywhere the pressure is zero. And at the center of the reservoir, we set up a well, which is the injection well. And uh, the exterior, uh, I'm sorry, the interior boundary conditions is that we fixed the flux, flu sorry, we fixed the flux around the wall of the well. Mm, and we're gonna see what the pressures change when time goes on. So that's just the um, setup. We will have the um, math language to um, explain that later on. So before you go on, I have a quick uh, question. Uh -huh. So the model is going to be 3D or are you gonna treat it essentially uh, the fluid moves in a plane? That's a, so the fluid, it's, it's allowed to move in three dimensions, yeah? Um, mm, uh, good. Good question. Um, we're not considering about the flux uh, along the x-axis, along the z-axis. We're only considering about the flux along the y-axis. Okay, I like that better. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other question? Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, this is the de definition we're going to use the for, um, for the uh, derivation is um, the d alpha y t equals to one over gamma one minus alpha d over d t, the integral of that. And uh, we are only interested in the alpha between zero and one. Um, now we're gonna introduce the very famous um, equations from the flood, uh, mechan fluid mechanics, Darcy's law. Well, the Darcy's law when you were, uh, ex we Wikipedia, there was no this red terms. So this red terms vanished. Um, actually, um, the Darcy's law is Darcy, I think in 1850s, he concludes by experiments in the lab. Okay. Um, Darcy's law, the equations describe the flow of a flood through a parse media. Actually, he is using the water and the sand. Um, so the the flux the flux actually have a proportion relationship with uh, the pressure. Is that equals to the negative k is the permeabilities of the parse medias over the vis viscosities of the uh, the flood and the gradient of the pressure. And we introduced these terms for describing the Maxwell flow is now we're not satisfied with the water itself. We are interested about that something like have the uh, uh, elastics and the viscosities. So Maxwell flow actually is a uh, uh, viscoelastic flow have both uh, elasticity elasticities and the viscosities, okay. And uh, the lambda V here actually is a relaxation time. So what is it, relaxation time? Anybody knows that? It's a physics, physics concept. Actually, that is a time uh, return of a perturbed system into equilibrium. You could, ima uh, you could consider like when you want to steal the uh, like blueberry jam in the fridge and you get a spoon of the bread, uh, you get a spoon of that and you don't want your parents find it out. But your parents still could tell because the shape need time to get to normal, get to flat. Okay, so that's pretty much about the relaxation time. And um, like water, I think the water's relaxation time is like 4,000 milliseconds. So it depends on the flood you are you are interested in. So different flood have different uh, relaxation time, which is lambda v here. 
Um, actually, this is was uh, uh, developed in 1990s by a Russian uh, engineer named uh, Amotab. Amotab. I don't know how to pronounce the name of it. Okay. How do you spell? Hmm? How do you spell it? Uh, A M E T O B. A M. A M E T O B. It's a Russian name. I don't know how okay. to pronounce it. Mm. Okay, so what are we gonna do is that we replace um, the derivative, the partial derivative by the fractional ones. So we're gonna obtain this one. So everything keeps the same rather than... I'm sorry, Alice, yeah. what is Q? Q is a flux, like... Uh, is it hmm? flux of what? Of flux of the... Velocity the, of... Flux of the fluid. Um, so if you have like a, uh, you have like a door that's set up here, and then you want to test when um, what is the flood? What's the relationship with the flood and the pressure drop? It's the same as Fourier's law, it's just um, I'm sorry, what did you say then? It's the same form as Fourier's law, the temperature gradient um, gives you the heat. So it's a gradient, yeah. yeah, no, I understand it's a gradient, gradient of what, of, of the velocity or? The gradient of the pressure gives you- Pressure, P velocity. is the pressure. No, P is the pressure, so mm -hmm. that's, that's the gradient of the pressure. What is Q? Q is the flux of the liquid of the fluid. Mm. So which is gradient of the velocity? Yeah. Of the speed. So I have a question also. Mm -hmm. um, what is the motivation for replacing the regular derivative by the fractional one? Like I don't. Mm. I see it's there. I mean, I guess you can do it, but what is this the? Is, this is kind of like a testing uh, model. It's like uh, so those engineers they were not in, they were. Um, done with all the things they've done before. So they want to try something new, either by replacing parameters or change parameters. So here they want to change the regular derivative to be a fractional one, then to see uh, if they get the amazing result or not. That's their intuitions. Does it have a so what the result they have is pretty much um, ideal too, but it's kind of like the- But does it have a physical interpretation? I mean- hmm. Well, isn't it? Uh, Based I mean, on the setup of the model, you can see the model we set up is very ideal. It's not realistic. Yeah. So it but, really have highly depend on the model setup. Isn't, um, it, isn't it because, uh, I mean, Darcy's law, I don't think it's an, in porous media. And if you consider porous media, maybe that's the... No, Darcy's law is for porous media. For, for porous media? Yeah, it's, actually he did it for the water flow through the uh, uh, sand. Sand, so sand is okay. porous media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we introduce this term to describe the Maxwell flow. Mm -hmm. So I might have a question. I have uh, something is sitting in the back of my mind, but I might ask you a question because you might say, so uh, keep going. Okay. Mm, so this is the things we have, and then we combine with another very famous equation in fluid mechanics. It's called continuity equation. Actually, this continuity equation is uh, developed by three um, physicians. I think one name is Park and Cho and Kong in 2000. And this equation is aided by a uh, mass balance. Uh, diff a balance of differential of the mass. So you could see that the, um, the divergence of the flux that is equal to negative phi, phi actually is a unit mass. And CT is the parameters describing the uh, compressibilities. And uh, why, we were, why we want this relation because we want to eliminate the Q and we want to get the, the, <laughs> thing, 
only between the pressure and the time. So we want to see what going to happen if we we change the alpha and then to see what is the pressure change when the time goes on. So we want so this is our uh, intuition. We want to eliminate the Q. So we introduce this equation, which yield by the identical. And if you really uh, read the papers, they use something else for phi for phi. That is dollar unit of volumes and the unit uh, densities, but I think I could just... Uh, so phi is like the, is it a constant, it's a scalar? Or yeah, it's it? a constant, and the CT is also a constant. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much of that. Well, and then we did the process for dimensionless. We have our final mathematical models, which is here. Okay. It's a uh, simple plug in. And uh, don't forget the boundary conditions, which is I illustrated earlier. The pressures at time, um, sorry, I think it's time equals to zero. So at the very beginning, everything is equal to zero. Yeah, time equals to T. And when they, when you approach us to the, uh, to the end of the uh, rather than the pressure is equal to zero. So, if you, so for our model set up is infinity. And we're not considering about any uh, flood change along x-axis and z-axis. We're interested in the y-axis. And this boundaries conditions, interior boundary conditions will mm, is described the way fix the flood along the walls of the well. You can see the length of the well, the, the height of the well is from ZA to ZB. And everything else is the zero. Yeah, everything else is zero. So any questions? Not yet. Mm. Okay. So this is our governing equations. Now we're gonna solve it. So once we have a partial differential equation, the first thing in our mind is to use Laplace transform. We could change the partial differentials to be algebraic ones. So here it is. So we apply both sides, the Laplace transform. We have something amazing here uh, with respect to the time, T. Mm. So for the for the uh, space, we keep the same, and for the time, we have these amazing things uh, with f as equals to that. That's pretty much easy, right? And next is we want to do something with the space too, so we uh, introduce the Fourier transform. Um, based on the model setup, we could tell that the the pressures is symmetric with the y-axis, so it's even. So we use, actually it's a Fourier cosine transform. So that is um, the formulas. Mm. So next we apply both sides. And here we got an amazing thing is we have a second order ODE and we have the general solutions for that which is the things I put here. So I forget, uh, mm -hmm. what were the conditions in X and Y? They were, um... I'm sorry? Could you go back to, like, I think it was a slide or maybe two slides where you had the boundary conditions for X and Y. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to read, so yeah. yeah. So for, actually this is T equals to zero. So okay. the initial conditions is everywhere the pressure is zero. Okay. And, and when the um, when you approach it to the boundary, which is in infinity, the pressure is zero. Okay. Uh, I think this is not zero. I think now we are not considering about the uh, flux change or um, you know the viscosity change along x and y and z axis. We are only considering about the flux change along y axis. So. For x and z, we set it at zero. 
And this is interior conditions, boundary conditions, which is along the well from the ZAD to ZBD, we fix the flux. And everywhere else is zero. Okay. I think we are here. Uh, all right. So we next step is we do the inverse for a cosine transform. And here is the uh, exact solution to Laplace space we get. Well, the last part is the simulation. So here is what we have. So from this formula, we have to figure out two things. First thing is the Laplace transform, FS. Well, uh, we're gonna introduce a very famous algorithm. It's called the stiffest algorithm. He, uh, this version is developed in the late, late 1960s. Uh, once you have this Laplace transform and you fix the time T, so you have those kind of approximations. So we have the FS, actually let me remind you, is S plus a uh, constant times S to the alpha plus one power. So after those algorithms here, the pressures only depends on the parameters alpha, which is differential uh, order. Mm. This algorithm actually is very uh, popular because its simplicities and uh, it's performing good. But is there is something still unknown is the uh, convergence and what is the rate of the convergence for the algorithm is still not is still unknown. Um, well, I did some literature reviews. Um, I think in 2018, there was a, uh, a PhD, I think he is a PhD student in New York University. He proved that this algorithm converges for the functions of the boundary, uh, for functions of bounded variations and for the function that is satisfying a, uh, I think a analog of Dini's uh, criterion, but it's still open problem about the convergence of the algorithm. The next thing is the capital F. Actually, the capital F, F is when we do the inverse uh, transformations of the Fourier. Um, and this is a uh, improper integrals. Uh, we're gonna use the uh, uh, traditional Gauss-Lagrange method. I have someone as well. Mm. Once we have those kind of improper integrals, we could uh, approximate with the assumptions with the weight given by uh, the root of the uh, Lagrange polynomial of F ln at the uh, value of the function, um, the value of the function at the root. Uh, that's pretty much the same. But why we should pick 15 here? Uh, because we did actually, we tried like, 2010, I, we, and because of um, the efficiency of the algorithm, and time efficiency and um, the result, and we, we think that the 15 is the best. Well, it's still like a open problem is that any other uh, numerical uh, method could solve it or the 15 is the best one, it's still open. What did you do simulations on, or what, what did you write on? Uh, just, a, just a simple programming, like you use a C or C++, or, okay. yeah. I think N equals 15 will give you the, kind of like the best, yeah, the way big. So for the so study by, here is 15. It doesn't guarantee that every, you got to best, you mean, presumably, um, the best mm -hmm. balance between um, fast convergence and a good result, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. Well, here's the result. 
Uh, actually, we have something really uh, nasty at the very beginning. But after we did the log, actually, this is the relationship between the log pressures and the log time. Okay, so you could see the change. Okay. Actually, the alpha, which is the fraction order of the derivative, you can see that only effect at the very beginning of the simulation. So when the time goes on, the pressure reached the same. Well, we could have the conclusion that the pressure is sensitive with the, uh, the power alpha. Mm -hmm. ah, so this is, this is something I have a question about. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. if you're doing a curve fitting for this um, beginning piece, uh, this mm -hmm. pressure curve. Mm -hmm. So like if you try to fit it to like a, a power law or something. Um, my question is, what is the, um, how does the, is there a best fit curve for this thing, like on um, x to the alpha? Is there, does it satisfy some sort of power law? At, in particular, near this point, mm. I guess 10 to the second, yeah? Actually, it actually, if you are thinking about the physical uh, things, it should be like a uh, change, you know, like this gradually uh, rise up and then reach to the equilibrium point or whatever, right? So I was wondering but what we're interested about, like, how the alpha effects on the pressure that's my question. So, yeah. is it, so is it there's no there's no standard to just to verify it's a good alpha or not good alpha. So that was sort of my question. It, mm -hmm. If this dependence on alpha is making it, um, is it like a critical dependence where at some point it kind of acts like a power law and it kind of it's like a phase transition? Mm -hmm. No, this is just something like we did for our interests. <laughs> okay, but, well, I'm still wondering. Yeah. Cause they, yeah. Because there's actually no uh, physical things or no um, like actual data shows that this is a good model or this is not a good model by, by this figure. There's no. Uh, what we did is like, um, it's just we, just for the, try something new to the, yeah, so let me yeah. mm. let me explain my motivation. Um, my knowledge of, I mean, the problem that you set up looks a lot like percolation. Mm -hmm. And in two dimensions, this percolation um, phenomena has this, this criticality thing where below a certain density of the material, that you're, the porous material, um, mm. it doesn't, the, the water doesn't percolate through. Um, but above a certain density um, of the material, it, it does. It's, it's a critical point that it happens. So a critical value of the density. And here yeah. I think it probably end up being something like critical um, well, forcing, because it probably it's related to the amount of force that you're like, you're, the force due to pressure that you're pushing through. So it depends on your exponent in the Darcy law. Mm. So I was wondering if this critical behavior showed up in this, um, the exponent of alpha was my question. I don't mm. know if that made sense or not. Mm. Um, but it, it mm. looks, I mean, the, the flavor of the problem is very similar. Yeah, maybe. Mm. But the things we are, um, yeah, you are talking about some. Um, I think it's something about stochastic processing, you know? It, it, there's stochastic versions. Yes, yeah, so, um, oh. so here with actually the, everything is fixed rather than the pressures and the alpha. So, um, yeah, I also did some research about if they are, like you said, reach some critical point and boom to be another situation. Yeah. But, uh, Okay, maybe. This is not our studies for here, but you can, I think you can use the like, what do you call it? Common filter or whatever. You have a sensor down there and it could reach out you the exact data from the underneath and it change any time. And then update your algorithm, give you a better approximation to the real case. Um, I think common filters did that things. You know, common filter algorithm. It's stochastic processing. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm. So here the future work is for for the study that I did is the it's very difficult to find uh, and prove the convergence of the algorithm. Uh, we used I mentioned like Gabor Steffist uh, algorithm. Is still open problem, and the second thing is that is there any other um, numerical methods to, for solving uh, would be better, give you a better or 
time efficiency of conversion is good, you know, that's still a uh, future work. Mm. So that's pretty much of the talk. So here are the references. So, yay. Um, I don't know how to, <laughs> you'd think after like a year or a good six months of doing this, we'd figure out how to end the talks, but. Um, <laughs> So does anyone have any questions? Um, I have a, a couple, but um, I have a question. So yeah, this page. <laughs> uh, so this convergent, uh, like uh, in, in what sense? Mm. Also, this does this convergent depend on your uh, boundary condition or initial data? Mm, I haven't, um, I actually read that paper in 2018. Yeah, he published some updated result. Mm. Whose paper? <laughs> um, it's called um, Kaznikov in 2000. He's from York. I could send you the paper. He has something like um, to prove that this algorithms convergence for some functions abundant variations you know you got those kind of conclusions but i haven't read i just read the abstract i haven't got in detail and i can send you the uh, yeah. the paper mm. okay mm. so uh, another question is uh, mm. the, the same favor there's a 15 what does it mean the the best uh, yeah, good one, huh? 15. Mm, I think, I totally forget, but I think we tried 20 and we tried 10. Uh, I think for 15, it gave you, uh, I, if, like for 10, it's really something that you have a nasty result and then take time. Uh, it's not, Conversion good and for 50 and above, like if you pick 16, uh, I think we just pick 15 and 20. So there's no much difference between 15 points and 20 points. And uh, so that's why we pick 15 is the, based on the result. I mean, um, yeah, this is still like, what if you're not pick the Gauss Lagrange, you could pick any others to um, simulate proper integral. Well, that time we just picked that, but um, well, I think why we pick 15 is because we have the same result for 15 points as 20 points. So we choose 15, I think that's it. Cause when you solve, I think when you, um, when you saw, because the XI is the ends, the ice rules of the polynomial, it's take time, you know. I think you have some references available for you, but. Um, so it doesn't depend on like 15, you got the, I, I think it's a, the bigger N is the more, the smaller yeah, the area is, right? yeah. yeah, but I, I think we compare 15 and 20. That's what I remember. We compare 15 and 20, we don't really have so much, uh, you know, differences. So that's why we pick 15. It's constrained optimization, but um, you want to admit, you want to get the best um, possible uh, approximation with the least amount of time taken. No. Um, so the cost function has to be, um, or the cost function is your constraint. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I kind of got lost. Why are we looking for the pressure? I mean, this is the pressure of the fluid we pump in. We're looking for... The pressure is the uh, uh, the pressure in the parse media. Oh. Uh, you can just imagine that you put a device to test the pressures underneath. So we're interested about the pressures in the, in the reservoir change when the time goes on. Okay, and how do we know, is there an oil or uh, is there oil there or not? I mean, what, what does it, what, what should we look for when we read off the pressure? So 
we have all this data. How do we know that it tells us, well, this is the place to dig or just go away? Oh, that's something before it, you know. Uh, that's something we call it like uh, uh, testing or whatever. So pre-test. I think it's called pre-test. This is kind of like uh, in the middle process. So they have some devices to test, oh, there was something down there. Oh, I see. And then we do the simulation. We either put a well here or put a well there to see the pressure change. They have some impact for the surroundings or whatever. And then we got some results. Okay, good. Um, so, so the huh? thing you're solving for, the pressure you're solving for is telling you how, um, I guess how much to push the, the raining oil. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's it. Is that kind of the... How strong, I mean, the, the choice of alpha is telling you how much pressure you want to put to, I guess, force the oil out, I guess, is maybe the... Oh, let me go back to this. <clears throat> so, um, there was two um, common boundary setup um, for the oil exploration. One is a fixed pressure, one is a fixed a flood. Usually we fix flood. Because we want, because those, you, you know, all your company, they want, like, hey, I want every day, like, uh, a thousand kilometers, you know, kind of like, I want to fix that things because I want to sell it, you know. So usually we set up the fixed flood, like, uh, every day I could get a, a tons of oil, something like that. So usually we, how to fix that is because you could um, have something controlled for the injection well. So maybe now just this one, maybe you have tens around them, you can, you can switch or either push more on the whatever to fix the flux here for the production well. So usually, uh, yeah, usually we have those kind of um, set up. I'm not sure if you answer your questions or not. Partially. So it, the whole problem looks very similar to this, um, mm -hmm. or the percolation models that are around. So I know in, in 2D, so if you assume that the um, the fluid is being pushed out uh, 2D, so you're looking to um, essentially make sure that the fluid or the water pushes all the oil out. Um, in 2D, mm -hmm. there's a complete solution to the problem. It's Yeah, but, but be careful because in 2D, it's exactly, I mean, I know you're, what you're talking about uh, because it's hell is short. But, but I'm talking about SLE. Um, well, whatever, yeah, but, but, but that Darcy law they use is without that extra term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so there, it's like a, it's a correction. Yeah, it's a um, correction. It's... And I don't know how, so I mean, the, the, the percolation models are all discrete models. Um, and then you take this limit, the scaling limit, and the, and the scaling limit is described by SLE, I think, uh, maybe, I forget the exponent for um, uh, percolation, but it was done by Smirnov, yeah? Yeah, I, I, forget, I forget basically everything. I had a, uh, before your time, I had a high school student here who did a project on this. Uh, and then, uh, well, it was a high well, school. All the results I know of are in 2D because, I mean. Well, uh, because, of course, yeah. because uh, the, only thing they theory. Know, the only thing they know how to use is complex variables because. Uh, yeah, so the problem in 3D has like, I, I don't know, I mean, they're probably still critical exponents. And I think at least numerically, they found something like that um, for the, the percolation, I guess, or for percolation to happen. But I don't know anything about three dimensions. Uh, I, I can tell you by uh, irony of fate, uh, in my very youth, I actually was doing, I was working with geophysicists just for fun during the summer in Siberia, in Russia. And uh, they were actually uh, looking by very similar methods. They were, it was stage one. Uh, they were looking uh, more or less for where to look for oil or gas. And the way they do it, uh, you sort of go uh, along. In our case, it was tundra, which is actually very difficult to walk because it's like knee deep swamp and uh, you every so many meters you put uh, two pairs of electrodes and put the current 
through them. So you put the current through one pair and then read the results as it come, comes back to you. So you uh, uh, on the other two. And that means that you are mathematically, that means, which I realized 20 years down the road, at that time I was 18 year old and the only thing I was interested in is just having good time and drinking and not trying to calculate anything. I had, I was foolish enough to tell them that I know how to use the slide rule. And when everybody else was having fun, they put me to do the calculation with the slide rule. But, but actually 20 years down the road, I realized what they're doing. They're solving more or less a Cauchy problem for the plus equation. So when they put the initial current, initial flux, that's the data. And then they, uh, when they read the result, they're trying to get the picture what's underneath. Because, you know, there is, uh, when yeah, the, the current, the right, because there is, a re uh, there is a resistance and various different materials like have different resistance uh, constants. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's what they did. So more or less, when I started doing it mathematically, I realized that 20 years prior, I had been doing it in practice, namely uh, solving Cauchy problem for the plus equation and looking for singularities. But you look, you look for abnormalities when, because you assume underneath, well, in tundra, you is, it's not rock, but you assume it's ice. But uh, but then when there is oil, that gives you different or gas, it gives you different reading. Yeah, that makes and, sense. Yeah, well, it, it makes sense, and <laughs> and I went uh, sort of in the nineties. I went to a conference of geophysicists uh, because they invited me because of this work on Laplace equation and so on. But then they told me also that, of course, Amer in, in the United States in particular, of course, that's not how they look for oil. This is all very nice and theoretically very beautiful, but, but it just takes too much time and too much money. <laughs> they, they more or less look like they sort of know where to look and then they start, uh, they have some very ad hoc methods to uh, for the stage one, as Alice called it, how how to start, where to start drilling, and where to start really looking for for, for stuff. Like you know, they 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 know to drill in uh, the Gulf of Mexico, right, for oil, but they're not drilling in Lake Okeechobee uh, to find oil there. So so I mean, <laughs> uh, it was kind of a deflated deflated my uh, uh, sort of uh, pride that I was doing something practical for once. It was also an embarrassing part of this story because at some point I got the grant. Grant was from, you know, the usual mathematical grant for singularities, lo looking for singularities of uh, solutions of initial value problems. Uh, and then the reporter came, I was in Arkansas and asked me to explain what this grant is about. It was a nice grant from NSF and so on. And I was trying, trying to explain sort of in human language. So I gave, gave that model. And the next thing I read, unfortunately, I'm not telling you where, but it's still on the internet. I read this article and the first sentence already, I almost killed myself. The first sentence said, precisely that. When geologists are looking for oil, they turn to mathematicians like Dmitry Havinson. <laughs> and it was like, I still hope that it's only me who knows where to find this stupid article, but, but uh, it was terrible, terrible, terrible. Well, you said it was in Arkansas, yeah, so we just need a look. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, but I'm not, Arkansas, you may be surprised, but there are several papers 
in Arkansas. <laughs> so not, not just one tape. It was, uh, but it's, it's still, it's still uh, somewhere there because for some reason, several years ago, I still saw it. Uh, but the truth of the matter is when geologists are looking for oil, they don't turn to, to methods of solving Cauchy, Cauchy, Cauchy problem for the plus equation, but it's uh, very similar uh, to what Alice was describing, because, except it's instead of drilling and pushing the oil out, which is stage two, they, they're just trying to see the picture underneath by tabulating the resistance uh, uh, of, they try to see what, what is underneath because you can't really see what is underneath. It's, it's, uh, but uh, I mean, I never did anything with fractional derivatives. I don't, I don't know. Joel is doing something with this now, isn't he? I, I missed the talk. I think I was on. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually surprised he didn't, uh, didn't, but he, he's been in kind of hiding the whole semester. Uh, because that's his thing. Yeah. The fractional uh, calculus. But the fractional calculus seems to be, it's just besides oil, it's kind of pretty branch of analysis, which Indeed. So, any other questions for anyone? Um, if not, let's thank our speaker one more time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I think, um, for now, we have a speaker next week, yeah? Yes, next week, Meng Yang will talk about uh, orthogonal polynomial asymptotics. Oh. That'll be nice. <laughs> well, don't don't forget, as Jenny says, to start from the beginning. It'll be a fun talk. I'm sure. <laughs> no, we don't have this requirement in our seminar. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, as I said, the only difference with truly Russian seminars is that we're all online, so nobody walks over to you and just grabs the chalk and and yeah, 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 you know, start, starts talking. But uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, Alice. Yeah, thanks. Good talk. That was great. Yeah. Um, very interesting. How so? How long have you been doing it? Was it back in China or? Uh, this is something I did like maybe twelve years ago when I was a uh, undergrad, and uh, yeah, in China. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I found something really interesting lately, like the. Like who don't ask me about the convergence things, that's pretty much still an open problem. If you could devote yourself figure out, figuring out for what kind of functions is convergence, in, what kind of sense of convergence would be a very nice thing, because very popular, this algorithm is very popular. Mm -hmm. But there's still nobody, you know, uh, well, yeah, there was someone, yeah, I just find this two, two years ago. Yeah, someone did some updates about the convergent things. Yeah, but you can imagine that there are so many notions of convergence. It's yes. probably not, not point-wise. I mean, mm -hmm. point-wise usually is hopeless mm -hmm. in those things. So it's L2 or some a little bit more defined than L2 and uh, whatever. And, I mean, a lot of numerical analysts, they, they just make a very good living from, from proving, pro, uh, taking some very simple equation and proving convergent, various convergence results for, for numerical schemes. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, I think I have to get going. So see everybody next week. Hopefully. Uh, no, yeah. see you at four. Oh yeah, see you at yeah, four. Yeah. Um, so but I'll be your talk of course. Yeah. So see you then. All right guys. Thank you. Okay. See you later.